Welcome to Let's Play Battlefield 1942. On today's episode, we have Wake Island. And this time around, we're going to be spawning in on the Japanese side to do the assault. If you recall from the previous version, the Americans are on defense and have no uncapturable base, whereas the Japanese have a destroyer and an aircraft carrier. The round looks like it's been going on just for a brief amount of time, long enough for someone to take the destroyer out and start moving it around. I'm going to have to wait for the destroyer to pass by so I can maneuver around in the landing craft. The landing craft have a lot of inertia, so it's really hard to steer them around for a full turn. It seems like the other Japanese have been trying to land on the, the far wing of the island, but what you really want to do to assault is attack that flag over there that I'm headed toward right now because there's a large uh, flag capture radius and you can hide on the beach just out of sight and turn the flag neutral before you start the attack. As you can see the flag capture icon has popped up already and if you want you can hide just out of sight on the beach area while you wait for it to turn neutral. Now what I like to do is at least get some sense of how many people are over here before the flag turns neutral because once it does it's a obviously a total giveaway to the defenders that there's someone who's intruded. On the other hand you do want to neutralize the flag just before you kill any of the enemies because they can respawn in on some of the servers with a really short respawn time. Unfortunately, the allies have done something very smart, which is to move their tank from the other flag, the flag just to the west of here where it spawns in, and they're using the tank to defend this point because this point is usually the prime target for the Japanese to attack. Since I don't have any anti-tank weapons other than my three grenades, there's really nothing that I can do about that tank other than just keep this flag neutral and kind of annoy the tank by pinning it down. But I believe that tank was uh, pretty dead set on defending that flag, so he wasn't going to run away. Fortunately, the destroyers moved about a bit, so I can take the landing craft once it spawns in and just drive it over here to the airfield flag. You normally don't see too many assaults by the landing craft directly to the airfield, especially not as the first flag to attack. Although it's easy to turn the airfield flag neutral because it has such a large capture radius, it's very difficult to capture the flag for the same reason. It's harder to clear out all of the enemies because there's so many different places that they can hide and there's tons and tons of little huts and houses and bunkers in the area. Another difficulty in attacking this flag straight away is that the Americans like to spawn in here and grab planes. All the plane campers are going to be here, although I don't really see any over here right now. And it also spawns a tank and a couple jeeps. So Americans often show up here to get vehicles. The good news for me is that a couple of other Japanese have already tried to make an attack here. So they can back me up a little bit in case uh, I'm, I need help. And at any rate, the first guy over here turned the flag neutral, which was very useful because otherwise, after I killed some guys, they might respawn in right away and know exactly where I was. Well, we did manage to capture this flag, and I guess I'll give this guy a ride if he wants it. The next flag that I like to attack is the landing beach. It's a fairly small capture radius, and someone else is already turning it neutral, so I'm going to assume that he's going to make uh, good headway over there. 
and I'll head over to this flag. The tank also spawns at this flag, so it's a good idea to capture this one as soon as you can. The primary reason why I like to go over here is to make it so it's a one front war. If you capture this flag and then work your way over, then you don't have to worry about people spawning from behind you. So now you can see it's one front. We've got this flag, there's nothing behind it over to the west, assuming no one's over there just playing in the cannon. And we've got the landing beach flag, so the only thing next on the list... Oh, there's a bad guy over there. On the, he must have been on the anti-aircraft gun that's over there. Alright, so now that that's cleared out, that should be the very last enemy we'll have to deal with coming from the west. In the meantime, they've counterattacked at the landing beach. So we can just continually spawn over here on the far west, and uh, we should all be in pretty much alignment, all of us moving over to the landing beach flag at once. And we can push all as a group. That's one advantage to having just one spawn to begin with, is especially if it's over on one side. So everyone knows exactly what they're supposed to do next. We're all going to head over to the landing beach flag. pretty obvious that there was a guy over here in the bunker because the flag was neutral for much longer than 10 seconds. And now that we've gotten these two flags, everyone knows exactly what to do next, and that is attack the airfield flag. This flag is, this map in particular is very linear. Most of the maps on this game have multiple routes of attack. This map was designed with real world geography in mind. They made the Wake Island map look like the actual Wake Island, which is just this little V shape. So assuming that we all started on the west, that that first flag that we captured, it's just a row of flags, one after the other. There aren't too many different ways you can attack, although we could theoretically have people spawning in on our destroyer or aircraft carrier. Right, so there's an engineer here throwing out the explosive packs, and yeah, he had, uh, apparently what he did there was he had explosive packs on both sides, uh, covering any attack from the window or from the door. And that's a very good tactic to use if you're an engineer on defense. You can put X packs, especially on bunkers that are really small, near a small flag capture radius, like on Guadalcanal map and you can just detonate the X-Pack as soon as you see an enemy come by. But that was an interesting strategy that he used there was uh, to guard both the door and the window. Otherwise you can just look in through the window and shoot at him. Stay tuned for part two.